What's up guys, it's Zach aka Holmes with an X and today I'm extremely excited to have this package in my hands. Alright, so if you've been following me on social media over the last few weeks, you'll know I have been talking about this almost every day. Uh, patiently I've been waiting nearly three months to receive this. Uh, and it is a original Prusa i3 MK2 S kit set. Uh, so today I'm going to be unboxing it and building it. Uh, so this package has come to me all the way from the Czech Republic and I've had a nightmare dealing with a certain courier company uh, over the last couple of weeks trying to get my hands on it. Uh, I won't name them but I will say that they have given me an unnecessarily painful service. Uh, I am also a little weary of the condition of this package, so as well as videoing, I'm going to be taking several photos as I unbox it. So my first impression of this package is it's a lot smaller than I expected um, from what I've seen on other videos, and I'm not sure whether that's just a trick of the camera or if they've increased the efficiency of their packaging, but uh, either way, it's, it's about 10 kgs. Alright, first of all, so... Thankfully, they've included three invoices. Better too many than not enough. It looks to be in pretty good condition. Alright, that's better. It does look like it's very well packed, got lots of um, protection, some sour uh, candy, a fourth packing slip, a note slash instructions, so two very in-depth looking booklets, one for 3D printing, one for assembly. Okay, power supply with the 3D printed um, mount. So I, I chose the all black kit. Uh, as opposed to the traditional black and orange. So, you know, almost everyone that I see has a has an orange Prusa and I wanted a black one. Uh, there's a power cable. And so now we're left with a series of boxes. Um, I'm gonna start, I assume that this will be the heated bed, or is it the metal frame? It is both. I'm actually going to take a lot of inspiration from this packaging and uh, instructions and everything uh, for my own work. It's a learning experience. Box number one. So this looks like gears, bearings, uh, hot end assembly. What I like is that they have these individually labelled bags. So number two, Y axis, and it shows you everything that's inside. Yep, so this, this looks like mostly the uh, the three axes assemblies and the extruder assembly. There's even a whole bag of spears, which is just awesome. And the LCD assembly, uh, very well protected there. Uh, a glue stick. This is really cool as well. So they've included a tool kit. So there's a couple of wrenches, uh, needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver, and a range of Allen keys. Uh, I've also, before this arrived, I bought myself because um, I've been reading the forums and people are saying it's handy to have a tap on hand um, for when sometimes you need to re-thread the holes in the frame so I bought a just a, a simple um, where is this thing? yeah one of these so it's just got a different attachments you can use um, I got that off AliExpress for about three dollars lastly in this box we have uh, is that just filament? I don't know looks like filament but it doesn't make sense it's, it's three mil and this is a 1.75 the genuine 
E3D V6, which I'm very excited about, the all metal hot end. So here we have the uh, Rambo board. Okay, now this next one's easy. That's the uh, kg of PLA filament that is supplied with the printer. This is a box full of the 3D printed components. These components are all printed on other uh, Pressure i3s. And again, I got the black kit. It's x-axis, y-axis, z, uh, extruder assembly. So the next box is labeled motor kit. Original Prusa i3 stepper motors. This is the extruder stepper motor, clearly labeled. And from the looks of it, and from what I've read online, a lot of this uh, electronic assembly, at least, is plug and play. I don't believe there's any soldering required. I hope there isn't any soldering required because I'm not very good at it. And right down at the bottom of the box here is the heaviest part of the package. So we've got linear rods and threaded rod uh, in here. So it's obviously got some uh, protective sheathing for the uh, for the wiring and they've actually used that as part of the packaging to protect the rods, which is really clever. So I've had a little bit of trouble with the calibration process after building this kit to very precise tolerances. Uh, at first it ran through the self-test without any issues and then I had a few problems with the Z calibration. Uh, then I moved on to the XYZ calibration and all hell broke loose at that point. Uh, I couldn't get it to work and then it started failing even the self-test. And so I went back and forth uh, making everything as square as I possibly could and it didn't help. And so at that point I decided I was going to call it a night and go back to it the next day. And then at this point it got even stranger. Uh, it wouldn't pass the self test and it was telling me that I needed to check the Z end stop wiring. Uh, so the Z end stop wiring is the Pinder probe uh, used to measure the calibration points on the bed. And so I checked that wiring as it requested uh, and it seemed fine. Uh, and then at this point, uh, I couldn't even get the Pinder probe to work at all. It just didn't seem to have any power. Uh, nothing could get it to activate. Uh, wiggled around the wiring, moved the carriage as, um, as it says in the manual, and nothing was helping. So I contacted the Prusa Research customer support, and within a few hours, they got back to me and said that I'm not crazy uh, and that it is a faulty probe. Now I'm wondering if my initial calibration issues were to do with the faulty probe in the first place. So once again, the Prusa Research team have been very prompt and helpful. Uh, they've got a new probe on its way to New Zealand. Just wanted to say again, thank you very much, guys. It should be another few days before I get it, which gives me time to partially dismantle the frame, uh, which I'll need to do to put the new probe in. But also, I'm going to take the opportunity to re-look re at those tolerances and make sure everything's up to scratch. So that's why, sadly, it's not running yet. Uh, hopefully it's not too much longer and make sure to keep an eye out next week for my follow-up video uh, where I'll be debriefing the entire process from purchase to first print and I'll also be doing a head-to-head -head comparison video between the OB1 Prism, RepRap and the Prusa i3. Alright so that's it for today's video. Uh, make sure that you don't forget to hit that like button. If you want to see another one of my videos click up here and if you want to subscribe make sure you hit that button there. See you next time.